Cyanocobalamin is the most commonly used form of B12 and vitamin B12 supplements and injections. Cyanocobalamin must be converted to the active forms of B12 through very complex processes in the body. It is important to note that converting cyanocobalamin to hydroxocobalamin, then to methylcobalamin or adenosylcobalamin, is a complex process that depends on various factors, including the efficiency of the cyanide hydrolase enzymes, and the availability of other cofactors such as glutathione, folate, B6, and ATP. The first step in this conversion process involves the removal of the cyanide molecule from cyanocobalamin by specific liver enzymes, leading to the production of hydroxocobalamin. This process is called decyanation and is important because hydroxocobalamin is the primary precursor to the active forms of B12, methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. The conversion of cyanocobalamin to hydroxocobalamin is mediated by cyanide hydrolysis, which cleave the tightly bound cyanide molecule from the cobalt atom in the B12 molecule. Once converted, the B12 molecule can be metabolized to the active forms of B12, methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. Hydroxocobalamin is converted to methylcobalamin through a process called methylation. Methylation involves the transfer of a methyl group from one molecule to another, and this process is facilitated by enzymes called methyltransferases. In the case of hydroxocobalamin, a methyl group is transferred to the cobalt atom to form methylcobalamin. This reaction requires the presence of specific coenzymes and enzymes in the body, including folate and vitamin B6. The conversion of hydroxocobalamin to adenosylcobalamin involves several enzymatic reactions. The first step is the reduction of the cobalt atom in B12 to a lower oxidation state by the enzyme cobalamin reductase. This creates a place for other molecules to bind to B12. The reduced form of B12 then binds to an enzyme called adenosyltransferase, which transfers an adenosyl group from ATP to B12 to form adenosylcobalamin. In summary, the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of hydroxocobalamin to methylcobalamin, is called methylcobalamin synthase, which uses the cofactor methyl tetrahydrofolate. The enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of hydroxocobalamin to adenosylcobalamin, is called adenosylcobalamin synthase, which uses the cofactor ATP. Therefore, any deficiency or impairment in these pathways or cofactors, can decrease the levels of active forms of B12, which can result in various health problems. Hydroxocobalamin is generally considered a more stable and longer-lasting form of B12 than cyanocobalamin. This is because hydroxocobalamin has a longer half-life in the body and is slowly converted to the active forms of B12 over time. This slow conversion allows for a more sustained release of B12, which may benefit individuals with B12 deficiency, or who require long-term supplementation. Cyanocobalamin is quickly eliminated by the body compared to hydroxocobalamin due to differences in their chemical structures. Cyanocobalamin contains a cyanide molecule, which is easily released in the body and metabolized into thiocyanate, a relatively harmless substance that can be excreted in the urine. However, the release of cyanide from cyanocobalamin can cause toxicity in some cases, particularly in people with kidney or liver disease. While cyanocobalamin must first be converted to hydroxocobalamin before it can be further metabolized to the active forms of B12, this conversion is generally efficient in healthy individuals with adequate levels of the required enzymes and cofactors. Let's recap the four forms of B12 from a previous video. 1. Cyanocobalamin, this is the most commonly used form of B12 in supplements and fortified foods. It is made by combining cyanide with cobalamin, and the body converts it to a biologically active form of B12 after absorption. Cyanocobalamin may not be the best choice for specific populations, such as older adults or those with chronic diseases. This is because cyanocobalamin requires adequate liver function to convert it to the active form of B12, and liver function may be impaired in these populations. In addition, chronic diseases such as renal or inflammatory bowel disease, may also affect B12 absorption or metabolism, making cyanocobalamin less effective. In such cases, alternative forms of B12 therapy, such as hydroxocobalamin or methylcobalamin, may be more appropriate. 2. Hydroxocobalamin, B12 is found naturally in some foods and can be used in injectable B12 therapy and B12 supplements. It is converted to active forms of B12 in the body, and is also used to treat cyanide poisoning. 3. Methylcobalamin, 
This is a biologically active form of B12 found in some foods, such as meat and dairy products. It is also available as a dietary supplement and is more easily absorbed and utilized by the body than cyanocobalamin. Unlike cyanocobalamin, which requires conversion to the active form of B12 in the liver, hydroxocobalamin and methylcobalamin are already in their active form and can be used more efficiently by the body. Hydroxocobalamin is a natural form and it has a longer half-life than cyanocobalamin, meaning it stays in the body longer and may require less frequent dosing. This can be beneficial for individuals who have difficulty absorbing or metabolizing B12. Methylcobalamin is also a natural form of B12 that is involved in several important processes in the body, including the formation of myelin, which is important for nerve function. Some research suggests that methylcobalamin may be more effective than other forms of B12 in addressing neurological symptoms associated with B12 deficiency. 4. Adenosylcobalamin This is another biologically active form of B12 found in some foods, including liver, kidney, and eggs. It is involved in energy metabolism and plays a role in neurological function. Adenosylcobalamin is an essential cofactor in two important enzymes in the body called methylmalanyl CoA mutase and L methylmalanyl CoA mutase. These enzymes are involved in the breakdown of certain amino acids and fats, and their dysfunction can lead to a buildup of toxic byproducts, which can cause serious health problems. Adenosylcobalamin helps these enzymes to convert the toxic byproducts into useful compounds that can be utilized by the body's energy production cycle. Therefore, adenosylcobalamin plays a crucial role in maintaining the proper functioning of the energy cycle and overall health. All forms of B12 can be effective. However, some may be more easily absorbed and utilized by the body than others, depending on individual factors such as age, digestive health, and dietary intake. It's very important to tailor individuals with the right form, dose, and route of B12 supplementation. Tailoring specific B12 therapy to individuals is crucial because people have varying B12 requirements. In addition, the effectiveness of B12 therapy can depend on a range of factors, including age, genetics, medical history, lifestyle, and diet. For example, older adults may require higher doses of B12 supplementation, due to reduced absorption in the gastrointestinal tract, while individuals with specific genetic mutations, may require alternative forms of B12 supplementation. Additionally, Individuals with underlying medical conditions or taking certain medications, may require careful monitoring and adjustment of B12 therapy. Tailoring B12 therapy to an individual's specific needs can help ensure that they receive the appropriate dosage and type of supplementation for their particular situation. Vitamin B12 in food is bound to protein and is released by the action of gastric acid and enzymes in the stomach. The free vitamin B12 then binds to haptocorin, a protein made in the salivary glands and stomach, protecting B12 against stomach acid. As this complex moves into the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, pancreatic enzymes break down the haptocorin, freeing the vitamin B12, which binds to intrinsic factor, which is produced by the parietal cells in the stomach. Next, in the ileum, the last part of the small intestine, the vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex, is recognized by specific receptors and absorbed into the bloodstream. Once inside the cell, cyanocobalamin is released from intrinsic factor and enters the cytoplasm, which is then converted to hydroxocobalamin through decyanation, catalyzed by cyanocobalamin lyases. The decyanation process is critical for maintaining adequate levels of vitamin B12 in the body. As shown earlier, it is the first step in converting cyanocobalamin to the active forms of B12. However, several factors can interfere with the decyanation process in the body, including genetics, low stomach acid, nitrous oxide anesthesia, certain medications, smoking, and certain medical conditions. If there are genetic defects involved with B12 metabolism and decyanation, which is the process that converts cyanocobalamin into its active form, it may be necessary to use alternative forms of B12 therapy, such as hydroxocobalamin or methylcobalamin. These forms of B12 do not require decyanation and are already in their active form, so they can be used more efficiently by the body. In some cases, genetic testing may be performed to identify mutations or defects in genes and enzymes involved in B12 metabolism. This information can help healthcare providers determine the most appropriate form and dosage of B12 therapy for individuals with genetic defects related to decyanation. In conclusion, the decyanation process is a critical step in the metabolism of vitamin B12 in the body, 
as it is the first step in converting cyanocobalamin to the active forms of B12. Therefore, maintaining adequate conversion processes of inactive vitamin B12 to active vitamin B12 is vital for overall health. Understanding factors that can interfere with the decyanation process is essential for preventing and treating vitamin B12 deficiency. Thanks for watching.